Welcome to the Sod Cemetery in its 60th season. It celebrates Seminole wins against the crowd and against the odds when no one gave FSU much of a chance. When you're near Doak Campbell, we hope you'll drop by and visit the cemetery. You can press the button and you can hear from former Seminole players who tell you about their days in bringing home the sod for victory and for burial. Sod Talk, connecting Seminole fans with Seminole legends. E.G. Green was an All-American wide receiver for FSU who caught passes in 39 consecutive games. He caught 166 passes for 2,920 yards and became an Indianapolis Colt. He left FSU as the Seminoles' all-time leader with 29 touchdown catches. Today, this Seminole Hall of Famer is the head football coach at Destin High School. Hey, Doug, I'm having a great day, and I'm just living a dream. And the reason why I'm living a dream today is because I have, joining me for this sod episode, one of the greatest Seminole wide receivers to ever do it in Tallahassee. E.G. Green is joining me. Coach Green, how you doing? How you B feel? B-Mac, the legend. <laughs> I'm doing great, man. Doing blessed. God is good, man. We, um... Just over in Destin, head coach over here, head football coach, first year, inaugural season, man, just enjoying life and appreciating all the blessings. Oh, no question. I, and I know, I understand this is your inaugural season, but based on your your instincts and your knowledge of the game, I'm pretty sure you're going to have the kids fired up and ready to go. Yeah, that that I can do. I can do that part. I can get um, I can get them juiced up, ready to go. You know how we played at Florida State. You know how we did it. You know, yes, sir. It's, it's, I tell them they got to bring juice. They got to bring the energy just like they bring a helmet. No question. And talking about Florida State, EG, let's go back to the beginning. You mm -hmm. came from Fort Walton in 1994. You could have gone anywhere in the country. But why did you choose Florida State? Well, a few reasons, a few good reasons for me. One, um, it was close to home. Uh, and, and me and my parents had a great relationship, had a great upbringing. Um, they poured in a lot of time and investment. So I wanted them, I knew that, that it was, we were, I'm two and a half hours away. So I knew that was a short trip for them. They can get to each home game. And um, I always play better when they're in the stands. And uh, I'm a coach's son. So I always wanted him to be at the games. I wanted my mom to see me. Um, and then obviously Bobby Bowden, you know, Bobby Bowden, and he was a huge, huge, huge draw. And, um, it's kind of cliche now, but back in the days, um, you know, Charlie Ward was like innovative, you know, a yeah. guy that, you know, he was a dual threat. He was almost like the first nationally recognized dual threat athlete back there spinning it. And it was right. just so intriguing. And they had all, they had all the bells and whistles. And even when I was at, in high school, they had Amp Lee and they had Edgar Bennett and they had, Terrell Buckley, these guys you would pay to see on TV. Yeah. And so it was it was very intriguing. Um, but the location, um, Bobby, um, the players that was before, that came before Charlie Ward, all those played in a factor to my ultimate decision. So, you know, we all it's cliche, but it makes sense. Yeah. Uh, they say that competition breeds success. Amen. Remind folks who were the wide receivers you played with at Florida State. Oh man, we had every we had a who's who, uh, especially at college receivers. I mean, I would probably start start off at the top with uh, Randy Moss. Although mm -hmm. I didn't play a game at Florida State to able to see such a great athlete, you know, I was where I told I told Coop, Andre Cooper, who I played with as well, which is also a dominant receiver when I was there. I said, "Well, Coop, it's going to be me or you because this kid is coming." <laughs> hey, EG, what, what did you see? What did you see immediately from Moss that gave you that view about him? What What was it? Something that he did well, or something that he just what What, what made you, you know, feel that way that this kid gonna will be special? You know, the thing the thing in with Moss is that initially he he came from West Virginia, and initially, you know, being from Florida, playing at Florida State, you think you see the best of the best. You mm -hmm. know, there's no better than what what we have. And um, so at first we were like, oh, okay, he's ranked number one. He's he looks okay, but he was such a quick study, and we knew he was long, and they said he was fast. 
but really, really didn't know how fast until you know how uh, Coach Bowden would have that preseason kickoff scrimmage where the scout team would go against the ones. Yep. And this joker, he didn't – the first play of the game, he caught an 80-yard bomb. First, I thought it was a fluke. Then he came back the next series and ran a 60-yard reverse for a touchdown. And this was his freshman year. That's when we knew, like, okay, this kid's special. And as the season progressed, the lore began to take off. You mm. know, the I mean, it became a myth, then a legend. Now, you know, by the time January hit, even before our, our season had ended, everyone was talking about they can't wait to see Randy Moss. And it was true. I mean, yeah. this kid, he could, he could, he was almost um, taken off from the free throw line and dunk. <laughs> so it was just his his talent was. I had never seen a, a human being being that talented before. Gotcha. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was a blessing that I look back at to see, but I was sure worried back in 1995. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you say you had Moss yourself, Coop, who else? Coop was there. Um, Peter Ward was in that same class. Um, mm -hmm. Ron Dugans was in that same class. Snoop Menace was in that same cl uh, wow. a, a class behind. Um, Lavernius Coles was in that class, was in the, and he came as a running back. Gotcha. Um, so we had mm, probably five or six back to back to back NFL receivers. And it all kind of started off with a guy, a receiver named Kez McCorvey. He was gotcha. really started the tree, and it was a style of play. You know, it was a style of play that we kind of could pass on, pass down. And you know as well as far as you know as a, as a DB, you know it's a style of play you pick up on when you go to Florida State. And yeah. um, Kev started that, and he just he was very he's sharing of intellectual property and and showed us how to become great receivers. And as the talent continued to grow, we had more success. Yeah, and your teams at Florida State had a combined record of forty two and five and one tie. Yeah, what was the attitude of your Seminoles? Dominate. Yeah. You know, it was a, we, we, you know, I remember talking with Peter and Andre Cooper and um, like even Wayne Messon. Wayne Messon was a great, great talent. He's actually the mayor of Miramar, you know, mm -hmm. and we would talk and it, especially at home and dope, we would want to put on the show. You know, we were, we were thinking about, Hey, we, we feel like we're the Ringling brothers and we going to put on the <laughs> show. You know what I mean? It wasn't, it wasn't a, it, we, it, the, the lost part never even crossed our mind. It never mm. even crossed our mind. Our 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 deal was we wanted to get the fans their money's worth. You know, they came to Tallahassee, they pay, pay their ticket and parking and bought popcorn and bought a jersey or two. We wanted to put on a show. That was our mentality, especially from the receiver unit. No doubt. And in 1997, you guys put on a show on the road. Your team mm -hmm. went to Chapel Hill to take on a top five North Carolina Tar Heel team in what they called at that time the biggest game ever played in that state yeah. it was a side game for us of yeah. course and you and, yeah. you and you guys thrashed them 20 to 3. Mm -hmm. you had a one-handed catch in the end zone yeah. i don't know if you remember that but it was yeah. magical right tell yeah. us about that catch and whipping the tar heels in their home state well it was a it was a it was a um a very unique situation because they also had two really good defensive backs and they played press coverage man we knew what they were going to do Mm -hmm. And they knew what we were going to do. One, actually, both of them played in the NFL. Dre Bly, I think, played for a really long time. He was yep. a really good corner. Um, they had a great defense. And offensively, we were on the roll. Um, and it was just one of those um, moments that you really want to test your mettle. Because sometimes you play – I mean, when you get to that point, you know how it is. Some games, you know, we were – we knew we could win by 70 if we wanted to. And, you know, some games you knew it was a dog fight. And those two were pretty consistent, Miami and Florida, in Florida. We knew those two games, we were, those were money games for us. Um, and then um, with North Carolina coming on the scene, it was intriguing. It was a night game. It was in North Carolina. From the receiver core, they had basically the two best DBs in the country. So it was a chance for us to um, show what we can do when we were pressed to make a play. So yeah, that that catch, you know, it was it was funny because, you know, I'm on the left. I can remember it, and um, it was just fortunate because I'm left-handed, mm. 
And I was able to, at the last minute, stretch. And I have, you know, huge hands. And I was able to stretch and just, I felt it hit my hand. I just squeezed it and tried to hold it as quickly as I possibly could. Because the guy was great coverage. But it was really a better throw by Thad. He put it where no one else could catch it but me. Yeah. So I was fortunate enough that I was left-handed to reach out and grab it and make a play. And uh, it's a play I always remember. Yeah. Tell us some of your fondest memories or one of, one of your fondest memories of the late, great Bobby Bowden. Man, you know, the thing I remember most about Coach Bowden was um, we were being practiced and he would um, come down from his tower mm -hmm. and we'll be on our break sitting down, drinking a little, drinking a little, the little, little bit of Gatorade he, they used to give us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a little yeah. Of Gatorade in the shade. In the shade, yeah. In the shade. And he would come over and he would um, um, give us knowledge of not football, you know. He would talk about life. He would give us great life skill knowledge. Um, you know, he would use his faith as a as a vehicle and a way to um, inspire us, encourage us not to be better football players, but more importantly, to be better men, you uh -huh. know, better, better brothers, better fathers, better sons, you know, and, and um, those you don't think about it at that time. You're thinking about I need if he can just talk about two more minutes, I'll get me a little bit more rest. Yep. But as as you get older and you, I'm the coach now. Um, I, those moments when he's given us that type of information um, and knowledge and pouring that into us as young men was very critical to my development even now. Even okay. the things he said then, and this is the 20, 30, getting up there, years yeah. ago, it still rings true today. You know, and um, I just, you know, you're worried, you're so worried about your career and what you want to do and going to the NFL and making money and buying mom a car and all that stuff. You don't realize that, man, I was probably being coached by one of the greatest coaches ever. It doesn't matter what sport. Mm -hmm. One of your greatest coaches ever to walk the earth. And, um, you know, so those moments that he was pouring into me individually and us as a team was probably the most important thing and most uh, monumental thing in my career that I remember about Bobby Bowden. Yeah. And and with that being said, E.G. Green, we've had great wide receivers at Florida yeah. State. Yeah. 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 You know, traditionally speaking, Belitnikoff, Zellers, Barry Smith, Peter Ward, just to name a few. Yeah. And on August 26th, you joined them as an yeah. FSU Hall of Famer. Yeah. yeah. What, what does that mean to you? Oh man, I thought I thought Coach Norvell called the wrong guy. I was like, Look, I know I know he ain't calling. That. I mean, there's so many great players, so many great receivers um, at Florida State. There's so many great moments at Florida State. Um, to be considered one of the best at Florida State is such an honor that um, you know it almost brought tears to my eyes. Not something I would even expect. I think yeah. that I was fortunate because I played with great people great teammates, had great coaches, and uh, I was just at the right place at the right time. And it's just more of um, the community and my, um, the people that was around me that helped me, mold me, it's really for them. Because without yeah. them, there's no way, you know, I would be in this position. So, you know, it's really for the city of Fort Walton, it's for my parents, it's for my you know, all my friends that I hung out with that made me make the right decisions at the right time because I could have easily went left. And it's really, it's it's a us award. So it's a chance for me to just tell the people that supported me and gave me all that they could give me to get to the point where I got. It's a chance for them, to, for me to say thank you to them. No doubt. No doubt. Well, EG, you, you're one of the best to ever do it when it comes to catching that football thank in you, Tallahassee. You. You, you will thank forever you. be remembered. Uh, I can't wait to see you go into what I call football heaven, going into yeah, the Hall of Fame for Florida State. And we wish you and your team nothing but the best success, an injury-free season, That's and go it. out and set and set the standard. Amen. You know how we do it. Go no. No question. No question, go nose, and thank you for being our Assad Talk legend.
for this episode. The great E.G. E. Green. Thank you for joining me. Thanks for having me, big man.